Over the course of the evolution of life on Earth, many species of animals have adapted to certain methods of feeding that have required the development of some pretty unusual novel features at the front of the skull. The proboscis of the tapir, the trunk of the elephants, and the downturned muzzle of the manatees and dugong are some modern examples, but it seems that some weird nose and mouth anatomy was going on in a particular type of prehistoric whale too. I'm talking about an ancient cetacean known as Macaracetus bidens. This 3 to 4 meter long animal lived about 45 million years ago during the Eocene epoch, and is represented by a few fossils found in modern day Pakistan. When it was first named and described by paleontologists in 2005, it was interpreted as possessing something the scientists termed a short muscular proboscis. However, since this initial diagnosis, there has been a bit of uncertainty as to whether the creature did possess a proboscis in life, or if it in fact had something else on its face. The original paper detailing this discovery recognised that Macaracetus was certainly a very unique whale, and actually so different from its other extinct relatives that it needed to be placed in its own separate subfamily within the protocetids, Macaracetinae. The study also described the features of its skull in depth, including those characteristics thought to be indicative of a trunk or proboscis-like structure. It's undoubtedly some strange anatomy. The front part of the nasal cavity, a region called the nasal vestibule, extends right to the end of the snout in this organism. There are particularly large holes called antorbital canals that would have provided a greater supply of blood to the front of the rostrum, and the entire snout itself is angled downwards. In addition to all that, there are significant anchor points for huge muscles to have attached to the face during life. So yes, something was going on here. Naturally, a trunk of some sort was the first suggestion to be made, because, I mean, who wouldn't want to see a whale with a trunk, it would be hilarious. The paleontologists who described Macaracetus argued that the anatomy of the skull suggested the creature could have used its trunk and downturned snout to forage along shallow seafloors for mollusks, comparing this sort of ecology to the walrus. However, as the scientists pointed out, the walrus has a very different skull shape, and is therefore an imperfect model. So too are the manatees, dugong and tapir, of which none are aquatic carnivores like Macaracetus, so they cannot be effectively used as comparisons. It therefore doesn't seem very clear what this prehistoric whale would have been using a proboscis for, and it's even uncertain if it had one at all. It is still a reasonable hypothesis to suggest that the creature fed on mollusks with its downturned rostrum, but a trunk structure would not really be necessary to allow this to happen. Still, more fossils of the whale would be needed to confirm this is actually how they fed. As Cameron McCormick explains in his blog Biological Marginalia, there are alternatives to a trunk having been present on the face of Macaracetus. Comparing the skull of the whale to that of a camel, there are actually numerous similarities that can be identified, seeming to indicate that the cetacean could actually have possessed an enlarged nose and big fleshy lips similar to a camel, instead of some sort of trunk, proboscis, or as it's pointed out it should technically be called, a proriscus, meaning nasal structures not capable of holding food. It's possible that a large nose in this cetacean functioned as a display structure in the males, much like the modern day grey seal and similar to the elephant seal, although we would of course need more fossils of the animal in order to prove that only male individuals possessed the nasal characteristics that indicate a large nose. In the end though, it really does seem that Macaracetus is such a unique animal that clear-cut comparisons with other creatures are just not possible. Despite similarities to camels, there are still many other differences in skull morphology, and the two organisms would certainly not be using a large nose for the same purposes. There are a lot of possible interpretations to be made from the unusual anatomy found in the skull of Macaracetus, but we simply need more fossils to be sure about any of them. What is sure though, is that the whale had some very large muscles on its face, and they were being used for a unique apparatus on the front of the snout that seems to have been quite unlike that found in any known animal. Thank you for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you would like to find out more about our world, its history and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, and if you would like to see more from us.